So we are going to start with you, Fabienne. Uh, Fabienne, she's the co-founder of SOS Mediterranean. And um, we are going to, maybe if you want to explain just in one sentence, what is SOS Mediterranean? Okay. Yes, uh, thank you, okay. Amandine. Uh, so SOS Mediterranean is a European maritime organization organizing rescue at sea in the Mediterranean Sea. Thank you. And I think we, we could start with a small video just to explain exactly what we do with your organization. So can we launch the video, please, of uh, Fabienne? So last night we were alerted to a boat in distress. Um, we searched all through the night this morning with the assistance of uh, aerial assets. We were able to locate the boat. So we were able to complete a safe rescue and have everybody on board. Uh, we have 85 people total. It was including five women and four children and the youngest child is just one year old. We launched the two fast rescue boats, equipped, uh, fully equipped with life jackets and mass flotation in case something was gonna uh, go wrong. Um, we did our protest as well, so we went together. We presented ourselves as a humanitarian organization. People seemed to be very calm and uh, the rescue went reasonably um, smooth. We managed to get everyone, um, to give everyone life jackets and bring them all safe on board the ocean biking. I joined uh, one of the ribs uh, in order to approach the boat and make uh, my first uh, medical assessment and my first triage. We delayed uh, the rescue without uh, uh, big problems. Fortunately, we will continue uh, to, to visit them. We will give to, uh, to, to these people uh, some rest because uh, they, they were absolutely exhausted. The information that we have is that they stayed at the sea for uh, several days. Uh, so they, they feel absolutely exhausted. Now the kids are playing around on the deck, uh, but I can feel a, a super silent environment around me. Uh, it means that they, they are really, really exhausted and uh, they, they need to, to have some rest. Thank you very much. Uh, congratulations for what you created. And uh, it's very inspiring. Could you just tell us where these refugees are coming from? Um, those people, because our uh, ship, the Ocean Viking now, and previously we had another ship named the Aquarius, is usually uh, located between Libya and Italy to rescue those people fleeing, uh, trying to flee uh, Libya, which is in a total chaos at the moment. And uh, they were first coming from other countries in uh, Africa, or from almost all over Africa but mainly from Nigeria, from the east part of Africa, but also West Africa. But at some point, they, try, they arrive in Libya, trying to cross the Mediterranean Sea, but they get stuck in Libya and get detained in centers where they are tortured. They, are, uh, they suffer uh, many abused and uh, they have no other choice to try to flee and to cross and that's why they go on this unsea for sea um, ship and uh, most of them unfortunately die is there is no ship uh, to rescue them and so where do they arrive in france so where exactly no, no, it's, uh, France is quite far at that moment. Uh, so wh where we are located in this uh, SAR and uh, rescue zone, we are off the Libyan uh, waters and uh, mostly f around 50 miles uh, off the Libyan coast. We rescue them and we do that in coordination with the maritime authorities and those maritime authorities will indicate the port where we can disembark the, the rescued people. And uh, at the moment, of course, we can only disembark those people in a, a place of safety and ob ob obviously cannot be Libya. So we, we rescue them and disembark when we got the authorization in Italy or Malta. Thank you. 
And so where is the boat now? I think the boat is called Ocean Viking, correct? Yes, yes. this boat uh, at the moment is named Ocean Viking, and we have in this boat since last uh, July. Um, and it's right now uh, at sea. Uh, during the last 70, 72 hours, he had rescued 407 people over four different uh, rescue operations. And those people were just uh, disembarked um, yesterday morning uh, in Tarente in uh, Italy. And now uh, those people are safely on shore. And uh, the, the Ocean Viking is preparing to come back to Marseille for a port call. And just um, to give us an, an idea, what is the situation right now in the Mediterranean Sea? I mean, we, we need to go a little bit, bit further that right now. It, what we have to know is that during the last six years, it's almost 19,000 people, men, women, children, who died in uh, trying to cross the, the Mediterranean Sea. And uh, even if the, the, the people who try to cross has dropped uh, severely since the uh, what we've seen in the 2016, 17, and 18. Last year, it's just like 11,000 people who arrived in the, in the, on the Italian shore. It's the, the mortality has skyrocketing. And last year, in 2019, it was almost 7% of people dying at sea trying to cross. And I'm just talking about the one we can count because there are many more probably that, uh, that die and we have no trace, no, no evidence uh, of that they have disappeared. So at the moment, the situation is still very critical because the, uh, it's, the mortality is very high and there is um, absolutely no coordination and no uh, facilities to rescue those people because at the moment, the Libyan are in charge of the coordination but unfortunately, they are not uh, ready and, uh, and to do it correctly. And we are desperately missing assets such as the uh, Ocean Viking to rescue people. And last and but not least, uh, for some reason, our action has been criminalized for at least two of the last three years. So it's very complicated to, to act in the area at the moment. Thank you very much. I think we can applaud uh, Fabienne and a remarkable work she's doing with SOS Mediterranean. So we saw that with her organization, she helped to rescue these refugees. Now, the question is, how do we integrate the refugees? So I have a pleasure to welcome Theo Skubla, the co-founder of Wintegrate. He's a very young entrepreneur. Uh, he's got two companies. Maybe you want to explain a little bit what you create with Wintergrade. Sure. So Josephine wa was talking about the about the moment when the issue became public in 2015. Mm -hmm. uh, that's when we created Wintergrade at that moment. Not because it was becoming public, but because I met two persons. Uh, one was engineer, the other students. They were refugees. Uh, they, they had been refugees for, for two weeks in France. And when I met them, I just discovered how big was the gap between their potential and their current situation. And so we created Wintergrade to revive refugees' professional projects and to also help society uh, seize uh, this opportunity because this is not a problem when people are here. It should not be a problem. We have the choice to make it appear as an opportunity and to seize it. And that's what we try to do while, in fact, training refugees of all ages, all qualifications, thanks to universities and citizens, uh, then to find a job up to the expectations or resume their studies. I think you partner with 12 universities, is it correct? Yes. In all France, so where about? So now we are in France, we are in seven cities, so we are uh, partnering with 12 major universities in France. Uh, but this is like just the beginning. Uh, to, to give you like just a, a vision of, of the numbers we, of, of people we, we, we supported, we, 
we helped a bit more than 1,100 people to find a job up to the expectations in four years. This is good, but this is not enough because when we compare it with the 48,000 people that obtain a refugee status every year in France, this is peanuts. Uh, and, and that's why, that, that's why, in fact, now we are scaling up not, not only in France, uh, but also in Germany and Italy from next year, mm -hmm. so that we can really change reintegrate from a training program that is, of course, we're working with all, a lot of citizens now, a bit more than 5,000 active uh, volunteers, but that can become a global movement of universities and youth to tackle this issue and to make it an opportunity. How many of them, what is the percentage of refugees who found a job after um, uh, integrating so your program? They are around 70%, a bit more than 70% six months after the program. So the program is very short and eh? it's like three months of basically French soft skills. Um, uh, we rebound in fact the social connections, etc. Uh, and in these three months, we just give the necessary tools for the person to then uh, be autonomous, empowered, and to continue and find a job up to the expectation. And so it's 70% yeah, 70, 70 of, of the person that go through the program six months after, so nine months after we meet them, uh, they find a job up to the expectations. So. Could you tell us what is your secret to make this model a success? Um, I, I think we really can... Um, the, our solution is based on, on, on this observation that uh, social cohesion uh, is created uh, around universities. I mean, universities are major hubs of social cohesion building. And so we wanted to, to rely on those hubs and, in, and instead of just doing a mission of integration on just our side, we wanted to put this very question of integration in the middle of society and to activate universities and citizens to be the stakeholder holding, in fact, this mission to revive refugees' professional projects. And, and, and that's uh, while relying on those stakeholders and while building tools to activate all those people that are already existing, already there, yes. ready to, to move forward, that we designed a solution that has a very strong impact, but at the same time, a very low cost that help us at the same time train many people while conserving a certain level of personalization because refugees is not one problem. It's just defining the diversity itself. And so among the refugees, we, we, we should not imagine that we, we talk about a type of person. Uh, it's not we talk about thousands of people that are, I mean, facing thousands of difficulties that are not the same, and we need to be at the same time global in our approach, but personalized because each person is different. Thank you very much, Theo. I think we can applaud Theo as well because he started his organization only at the age of 20, now he's 25, and he's got two organizations helping refugees. Thank you. It's very inspiring. Thank you very much, Theo. And finally, now we are on stage Fridtjof Nier from Germany, correct? Thank you. Yes, and he's a co-founder of Integrate. So could you explain to us what is Integrate exactly and what do you do for refugees in Germany? Um, Integrate is a smartphone app and website that refugees uh, can get all necessary information upon arrival, but also in their steps after that. And um, the content is not created by us, but it's created by the integration experts in um, the cities where Integrate is implemented. So we want to gather all the knowledge that is in different uh, people's heads and um, gather it in one place and then push out this knowledge to the refugees who need it um, in, in an understandable way by translating it to their native language. So Integrate is a digital app which means refugees need to have a phone, right? To have access to the app. How does it work? Could you describe um, what we need to have to use Integrate in a city? Um, so uh, we started it uh, also in 2015 in um, the city of Augsburg, which is close to Munich. 
um, and we gathered a, uh, a foundation that was working um, for the rights of refugees for over 25 years and the city council and uh, we uh, quickly found out that almost all refugees arriving in Augsburg had a smartphone and um, so we already had the medium where we needed to push the information but there was no place to gather the information and so we uh, invited all NGOs, um, municipal employees, civil society organizations to share their knowledge um, and we provided a platform um, where they can um, provide the information themselves without having um, advanced IT skills because um, this is what many NGOs and municipal governments are quite afraid of. Um, so we had to provide them with a low level um, information system um, and that's basically what we did. So you're just only in Germany right now and you plan to expand uh, your app in all Europe as well or how does it work? Yeah, so far the journey has not led us uh, across German um, borders but uh, although Integrate was kind of built for a German challenge um, um, we do see that Integrate could work all over the world um, because of the low-level IT skills that are needed, um, the, um, the platform is already in place. We just need the local experts to come together, um, willing to share their knowledge um, and help uh, refugees in their new home countries. And could you tell us what are the success of Integrate in Germany? Um, so, and we started off with one city in uh, 2015. In 2016, we had eight cities, uh, but today we have 59. Uh, and to put that into perspective, Germany has 401 municipalities. So, as of today, we can say um, in every seventh city um, or county in Germany, refugees and migrants can access information um, in their native language. Um, and we all know how much power lies in information um, and we are wanting to, to scale that even further in Germany and outside of Germany. Do you feel that we could uh, use your app in France? I mean, all, this type of app exists already in France? Did you make some competitive market and figure out if it's possible to implement in our country, for instance? Yeah, what is, what is the most difficult thing for us when uh, thinking about bringing Integrate to another country is to understand how the, uh, like the field of integration uh, works, who are the main players, who do we need to get on board, and that's why we need locals to tell us. Because in the end, even in Germany, we do not, um, we do not provide the content, the local experts are. And so I do believe that Integrate could work in France um, so we will need your help to tell us who to approach um, and, uh, yeah, and uh, help refugees uh, yeah, find their way here in France as well. Thank you. So we are going to close the panel soon. I just have one question to ask in which of you. How do you see your organization in 2030? Imagine we are in 2030 right now. Describe me in one sentence your organization. What goal you reach, where we are regarding the refugee crisis? You, can, you want to start? I'm going to start. Um, this is a difficult question, um, but I, ideally, Wintergrade would be a global movement uh, gathering all the universities in welcoming countries and all the students there, uh, and will be able in 10 years to maybe support more than. 200,000 people a year and this is really not just a big number but our objective we want really to 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 make our solution uh, global because it's not just because the numbers are big and that's funny to to play with big numbers it's because this is a global question and we definitely need to go also global and to be uh, at the level of this issue uh, and so our ambitions and the means we need to employ there should be uh, uh, meeting, in fact, the needs. Thank you. Fabienne? I definitely hope that in 2030, SOS Mediterranean would have disappeared, mm -hmm. that nobody else would die at sea. So that's definitely my hope. Same for you, I imagine, right? Yeah. 
no more app for refugees, no right? No app for refugees because um, hopefully we won't have any. Climate change will lead to us having more probably. But hopefully we can um, yeah, have made integrate obsolete in a way that um, cities and counties all over the world um, take on the responsibility to, um, uh, to welcome refugees and um, that uh, different organizations uh, work together on the same challenge that no digital solution is needed anymore. But until then, uh, we hopefully have a wide network of partners across the world and trying to reduce information yeah, information poverty and break down information barriers. Thank you very much to three of you. It's very inspiring what you're doing for refugees. You're doing a great grassroots work. And uh, thank you for your presence on this panel. Yeah. Bye. Thank you.